Uh, with us right now is former New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safer. Howard, very good to have you back. What do you make of this threat, or one that was seemingly stopped in its tracks? Well, you know, it's not unusual. It's uh, something that goes on all the time. The good news is this uh, threat was pretty much stopped by the NYPD, and the NYPD has the best intelligence and anti-terrorism groups of any department or agency in the world. But, you know, unfortunately, this happens, and, you know, you may or may not remember back in 1999 when I was commissioner, we arrested three young Palestinian men in Brooklyn on 4th Avenue with three active bombs. And we were very fortunate we got information and stopped it, but they were going to blow up the subway in Brooklyn. So, you know, what we need to do is we need to harden the buildings because terrorists don't like hardened targets. We need to train people so that you can respond when they see something, they say something. And we need to get really good intelligence because in a city as big as New York, with as many people moving around, there's no way you're going to be able to absolutely guarantee the safety of everybody. So we need to stop things before they happen like they did in this plot. In this case, they were able to intercept a lot of calls back and forth and, and communications between this Pakistani, this Philippine citizen, and one a Canadian citizen, uh, but living here, I guess. Uh, but uh, this stuff, uh, to your point, has gone on in the past, have been stopped in the past. And as you've reminded me over these many years, they have but to succeed once. Um, the effort here might have been unhatched or revealed because they got sloppy, I'm told, near the end in their communications. And an, an undercover agent was the one that, 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 that blew this for them. But how do we keep track of this sort of stuff? We have to, we have to keep track of people who are su suspects. We have to keep intercepting uh, communications when we know where the targets are, lawfully, of course. But we have to do this, and we have to do it relentlessly. As you say, you know, we, they can be wrong a thousand times. They only have to be right once. But what we can we do on trains, sure that... Howard? On that, that, you know, I know what you're saying about, you know, making buildings more secure, and we try to do that certainly since 9-11. But subways are another beast, I mean, uh, particularly in cities that, that, that rely on this sort of transportation. What do you do there? Yeah, with, you know, you, you have millions and millions of people using the subway every day. Uh, there is technology that I'm not going to discuss that can be used in subways to help. But really, it comes down to the eyes and ears of citizens. They see something, they see a backpack left, a, somebody who's dressed inappropriately, somebody's acting suspiciously. They need to contact authorities right away, and there's no reason to worry about being embarrassed. You're going to save a lot of lives. Howard, what about this idea that here's another group that wanted mass casualties, very similar to at least the approach that Haddock took in Las Vegas? We still don't know what inspired that attack or what made him do what he did or what was in his thinking. But again, the goal, mass casualties. In the early on, we were trying to tribute to he was looking at a country, you know, music-loving crowd. Turns out that wasn't necessarily particularly important to him. He was looking at other crowds of other type of music tastes, Chicago, Fenway Park in Boston. Uh, but, but the one common theme, large crowds try to hit as many people as, as possible. If, if there's any general tip you would give security forces in these cities, it would be what? Well, you know, you, you have to look at the surroundings. You have to search. You've got to use uh, explosive detectives. You have to use bomb dogs. You have to make uh, the personnel in those buildings aware of what's going on. But, you know, the fact is we're not going to stop every one of these. Uh, we just have to go on and live our lives, and we have to make sure that we make progress against ISIS. And as we've discussed uh, over the last number of days, we really have to do something about not how many weapons are out there, but how we account for them and how we hold people responsible for them. All right. Thank you very much, Howard Saver, the former New York Police Department. Commissioner joining us via Skype.